Hello, we're joined by Dr. Paul Allwood, Branch Chief of the Lead Poisoning Prevention and Surveillance Branch at CDC. We're celebrating the 30th anniversary of CDC's Childhood Lead Poisoning Prevention Program. Dr. Allwood, what has been the greatest accomplishment in fighting lead poisoning for the past 30 years? In the late 1970s, blood lead levels were very high in the United States. The average blood lead level for U.S. children ages 1 through 5 was 15 micrograms per deciliter. Because of the persistent efforts by CDC and our partners, average blood lead levels decreased by more than 14 micrograms per deciliter by 2016 to less than 1 microgram per deciliter. In reference to lead poisoning prevention, what health disparities and environmental justice issues exist? Lead exposure is commonly found in low-income housing that was built before lead was banned in consumer paint in 1978. With time, weathering, and other physical deterioration, lead paint will turn to dust, flakes, or chips that kids can ingest or inhale. Once ingested, lead can cause hearing and speech problems, slowed growth and development, damage to the brain and nervous systems, and other health issues. Some children have a higher chance of being exposed to lead in their environments than others. African-American children and children who live in households at or below the federal poverty level are more likely to live in housing built before 1978 and are at the greatest risk for lead exposure. Also, some countries have less stringent restrictions on lead in materials such as paint, cosmetics, and natural remedies. So children who are immigrants, who were adopted from a foreign country, and refugee children are more likely to have higher blood lead levels. You mentioned that blood lead levels have declined tremendously over the past few decades. Why is there still so much effort being put into lead poisoning prevention? Millions of children are still exposed to lead in their environments and significant disparities in exposure exists by race and income. Children at greatest risk for lead exposure are primarily concentrated in neighborhoods with older homes, lower family incomes, lower housing values, higher population densities, higher proportions of rental properties, and higher proportions of minority, immigrant, and refugee residents. We must continue to put an effort into tackling lead poisoning by promoting primary prevention and testing children at risk. Testing and identifying children with higher blood lead levels can help limit additional exposure by identifying and eliminating sources of lead in that child's environment, which will reduce their blood lead levels over time. 